As you're well aware, we're living in unprecedented times. Join us now for today's special program. I want to spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life removing pain. Lord, let Spend my life mending broken people. I want to spend my life mending broken Welcome to another 3ABN Today program. I'm Jason Bradley and I'm so glad that you decided to join us once again. Whether you're watching or listening, we're happy to have you. We have an exciting, fast-paced, fast-moving program for you. And uh, with, we're going to be talking about ASI Lake Union and all of the amazing things that God is doing through that organization and an event that you might want to uh, partake in. So you'll find out all about that. I want to introduce you to my guest uh, today. And we have Joy Kaufman on the set, and you are the president of ASI Lake Union. It's great to have you here. Thanks, it's a privilege to be here. Yes, and we have Debbie Young, the program chair. She's joining us via Skype. Debbie, it's Hello. great to have you. Thank you. It's good to be here. I wish you could be here in the studio. We miss you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And we have Gian, Gianluca Bacchiocchi, and he is a board member with ASI Lake Union. It's great to have you here. Great to be here. Thank you. Yes, sir. You're welcome. And Christopher Randall, VP for Evangelism with ASI Lake Union. How's it going today? Uh, real good. Sun is shining. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, before we dive into the program, find out about your roles within the organization and all of that, we're going to be blessed in song by Stephanie Dawn, and it's entitled One Pair of Hands. One pair of hands 
song. Joy, tell us a little bit about ASI. What does ASI stand for? And uh, talk a little bit about your role with the organization. All right. Well, thank you for asking. And Jason, you just joined the board of ASI Lake Union, so I'm officially giving you your hat. Thank and this you. says what the acronym stands for. It's Adventist Layman's Services and Industries. And so what we are is a group of people that come together. We're not paid by the church, mm -hmm. but we come together as businesses and leaders throughout all different walks of life and also ministries. And we partner together to see that we can share Christ in our marketplace, wherever it is. And so there's, it's like an extended family of the church. It, and Lake Union is one chapter. Mm -hmm. Every union has a chapter of ASI. And so we're kind of like smaller reunions. And then once a year, Lord willing, <laughs> pre-COVID, we would get together at the very start of August for a huge family reunion across the nation. And often people would come from around the world to encourage, inspire, and equip us to share Christ in the marketplace. Nice. Amen. Yeah. And that's, that's crucial. Like how do, how do you witness in a secular society? How do you take Christ into the marketplace. So I, th I feel like ASI really fills that, that void and creates a, a great networking space. Exactly. Well. And there's so many people that, you know, it's been around for 70 years. So it was inspired very early on. Mm -hmm. And our heritage goes all the way back to Madison College, where it was starting with this idea of being self-supporting. So the ministries would find ways actually to you know, earn their living through the ministry, and then it could be expanded without creating that dependency. Yeah. But then we also have ministries that, you know, can apply and get funding to help get wings. And that's been a blessing for many different ministries, including the one I lead. Amen. Yes. Farm stew. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. But today I have my ASI hat on. So. <laughs> Absolutely. So what's it like being president of ASI Lake Union? Well, I started in that role actually about a month before things shut down. Okay. So we've really pivoted as an organization to see how we can serve people now. Mm -hmm. And I will say ASI has never been better. Honestly, every Thursday night we have what's called ASI Hour. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the experts and, and business leaders will go on and share their techniques and stories. And it's just, it's very encouraging, especially for people working from home. Um, to just connect. And, and so I encourage people to check that out, asiministries.org. And then as a chapter, we decided we would come and partner with the national organization. We did a spring meeting here last year at, at 3ABN, thanks to the leadership here. But then this year, we are here launching our virtual fellowship, which will take place mid-April. Nice. And there's going to be more details about that coming from our other guests. Absolutely. And let's, let's hear from our program chair, Debbie Young, uh, kind of what her role entails. Perfect. Debbie, what, well, what's your role entail as, as program chair? Well, I've had the, um, the pleasure of being able to lead uh, the, the development of the program for the last uh, few years. And so it really is working with the team to um, decide on what our theme is going to be, what speakers we want to uh, showcase, uh, what projects do we want to highlight. And so it's just putting all the pieces together for the program. So it's, it's actually a, a wonderful experience to have. Hey, Amen. It sounds like that's a lot of moving parts, too. Yes. It can be. It can be, especially now as we're looking to ha host our first virtual spring fellowship. Uh, it's taking us on territory in territory that we've never had before. Amen. Now, Jean-Luca, talk to us about being a board member of ASI Lake Union. What made you or what inspired you to get involved with ASI? Sure. You know, 
I come to ASI from probably a slightly different perspective because, you know, a lot of the people that have been involved in ASI over the years have been people who have either ministries or they have their own businesses mm -hmm. or are, are somehow, uh, you know, have been focused on how they can actually use evangelism in their own very own business or ministry. I'm actually a, a, a international finance lawyer, and it's part of a law firm. You know, I'm, it's not my own business. It's part of a much larger, larger organization. But I knew that um, what ASI offered as far as that focus on evangelism, being able to reach out to people, you know, in ways that I couldn't do on my own and to be able to be inspired and in how to share Jesus in the marketplace, you know, in my own uh, business. Uh, and so I knew I had to be involved. And there was a, a board member uh, that said, basically, Jaluka, you're on the board. And it was, it was just like <laughs> I didn't have a choice. And um, and I tell you, it's, it's been a fantastic experience working on the board and working with Debbie and others. Uh, enjoy to also to help plan these types of events like the Springs Fellowship, mm -hmm. which, you know, we believe is just a, a phenomenal event each year to bring people from the Lake Union chapter together to inspire each other, to to figure out what ministries we want to focus on for the next year. And um, and so for me, it's really been an honor and a privilege to be able to work with all these wonderful people and to be inspired by each other as to how we can actually share Jesus in our marketplaces. Amen. Amen. Christopher, what's it like being the VP for evangelism? Because that's a huge element within ASI. I, true. Uh, in many cases, we've taken that evangelistic approach to, to work on mission trips and ministry projects. Uh, we've built uh, schools and churches in the States as well as uh, in, in Central America and in the islands. Mm -hmm. My connection to ASI is as CEO of Randall Residence. It's a family owned business uh, where I lead a group of about a thousand associates to create a remarkable living experience for seniors across the Great Lakes region. Our legacy of caring for seniors is, is multi-generational. My grandmother built the first purpose-built nursing home in the state of Michigan back in the late 1940s and attended her first ASI convention in 1951. Uh, my, my parents have been active in ASI since the late 1970s, and my wife and I continue to support this organization that I, I essentially grew up in. Wow. So, yeah, it, it truly is a legacy, for sure, for sure. So how has ASI, and I want to throw this out to everyone, how has ASI impacted or influenced your work, family, and ministry? Well, I'll start here in the studio. For me, it's just been such a blessing. I mentioned just being given wings. And honestly, ASI has done that through the mentorship of people who've gone before me, through the business partnerships and, and donors that have said, hey, you know, if ASI gives you the stamp of approval, it's a, a legitimate ministry. And so, you know, for you that are listening, whether you are just starting your first job, maybe you're a student, uh, maybe you own a business that's multi-generational like Chris, or somewhere in between, maybe you're just starting a ministry or maybe you've been at it for years, ASI is for you. And so we really want to get you involved. And we're here from the Lake Union chapter, but there's chapters all across the country. We want you to be involved in ASI and to have the benefits of being part of a family. And who knows, it may give you wings too. Amen, amen. And Debbie, how has ASI impacted your life? Oh, it's uh, had a tremendous influence on my thinking about uh, work in ministry, mm -hmm. uh, that they're not work and ministry separate, but really work in ministry as hand in glove working together. And my husband and I have been truly blessed. Uh, I've been um, blessed to be able to be the president of the ASI National and to be able to um, actually connect with a number of the different ministries and organizations and meet people who are really passionate about sharing Christ in their marketplace mm -hmm. has done a lot to uh, steer my perspective in looking at, well, what can I do more to share Jesus where I am? I'm a nurse by education, and I actually work in an oncology area, and it's been a blessing to be able to find and take advantage of opportunities to share Christ in new and different ways, mm -hmm. uh, praying with patients, uh, offering them 
um, some of what I might have experienced personally that might be a benefit to them. So it really has kind of restructured my thinking mm -hmm. uh, about what I do, uh, not just at home or even at work, but as I go from place to place. Mm, okay. Now, would you say that it's also helped to strengthen your faith as well? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I, I, the, the different uh, stories that you hear from individuals who are sharing uh, at ASI conventions or that I've gotten to know, um, to see how God has worked in their lives tells me that God can work in my life the same way. Mm -hmm. And so it has actually encouraged me to reach uh, further and to ask God for bigger things to do and to be able to lean on him uh, with a stronger faith as a result of what I've experienced and what I've witnessed in others. Amen. Christopher, how has ASI impacted your life? I know we know the, the legacy that's, that's there, the rich legacy sure. that's there, but how has it impacted your life and your faith? I, you know, ASI encourages and challenges me uh, to find ways to, to share Christ through my sphere of influence. Mm. Uh, that can be as simple as my interactions with residents and coworkers, business associates, uh, over the years, that's prompted colleagues to pursue a help, helpful living and attend the, the CHIP program with Hans Deal. Um, some have attended church with us. Others have requested Bible studies. Um, a few years ago, my, my father wrote an article in an industry pub publication that talked about fighting burnout and how a weekly Sabbath is an important part of our physical and spiritual health. And that has prompted applicants for our leadership positions um, to say, I, I want to learn more about your Sabbath, or, you know, I want to work for an organization that holds those kinds of values. Yes, yes, that's, that's awesome. Jean-Luca, how have you been impacted, uh, both in your faith and your family's life, uh, with th ASI Lake Union? <clears throat> yep. You know, um, as I was mentioning earlier, you know, because of the type of business, excuse me, that I'm in, you know, it's I actually have a kind of like an odd arrangement where my family lives in Michigan, uh, in St. Joseph, very close to Bering Springs, Michigan, and I actually my office is in New York City, so I have to commute back and forth, uh -huh. and so the way I have been thinking about ministry and the way ASI has helped me shape my thinking around ministry is that, on the one hand. I want to be involved in supporting other people's ministries, people, you know, like um, like Joy with her farm stew. And there's many other ministries that um, that are part of the Lake Union. And we just believe that, you know, supporting ministries is, a, is an important part of our own spiritual walk. And uh, and we're just so thrilled when we see the developments and things that are going on. You can see how God is working in multiple people's lives through these ministries. And then on the other hand, when I am actually, you know, you know, in, in New York, when I'm in the office or if I'm traveling because I have to do a lot of travel for my work, you know, it challenges me to think about, like, what ways can I introduce people to Jesus? And and for me, one of the you know biggest ways I've been able to introduce people to Jesus is through the Sabbath. You know, I work in what I would call a 24 seven culture. And so for people to see you working 24-6 instead of 24-7, <laughs> it always brings up that, that conversation about, well, why are you taking the Sabbath off? And, um, and so and, and I really try to encourage people, whether you know, they want to become a Seventh-day Adventist or not, I said, take a day off. You know, take, you know, try to, whether you want to take Saturday off, which is the day I believe is the Sabbath or Sunday, you know, try to take time off, try to be with your family. And so I try to instill what I call healthy principles in, as far as living, uh, how to live with your family, how to, how to prioritize things in your life, um, things like health and, um, and nutrition and exercise. Um, you know, I'm an avid uh, triathlete and marathoner, and so I, in my in the office, I even have a standing treadmill desk that I walk and uh, and work at the same time, and I try I try to really always you know focus on the health message, trying to get people you know to to get you know to think about life as a holistic um, you know as, as, you know to think about holistically and not mm -hmm. just 
you know, compartmentalize. And so ASI has really challenged me to both, you know, focus on how to support other ministries, but yet also how to live out, you know, my belief in ways that can bring people to, to Jesus, who are really in what I would consider to be a very secular world. Wow. That, so basically rest is unheard of in your industry pretty much. <laughs> and uh, uh, it, is, uh, it is brutal. It is brutal. Yes, you're challenging me to uh, rethink my, my time management methods with walking and working. <laughs> I, I'll have to get my life together. <laughs> for sure. Well, just so you know, I'm actually sitting now for the first time today. You know, like I, I did standing, you know, working the whole day. This is the first time I'm actually uh, sitting down. But yeah, I mean, that's just the thing is that if you can combine healthy principles and, you know, use them throughout your day, you know, it's when you start in the morning with your morning worship and your morning exercise and starting your day with proper nutrition and being active throughout the day, there's a cascading effect of all these things. And people notice it, you know, when, when I'm out and about in the office or traveling and, and I'm meeting other people, you know, they can absolutely notice a difference and they will ask you a lot of questions. And so I truly believe the best thing we can do when we're in a in a more of a secular environment is to really live out our faith, you know, in, in the little things, because people will notice those things and they will create opportunities to discuss Jesus. Amen. It opens the door. That's for sure. Uh, Chris, why don't you speak to us about mission activities? Sure. I, you know, ASI provides opportunity for us to uh, come together, uh, pool our resources, and accomplish more as a group than we can do individually. Uh, John Luca talked some about, you know, sponsoring other ministries, uh, but we've also been uh, very good at choosing our own mission projects to go on as, as a group. Uh, we've done church building in Wisconsin and Illinois. We've built a cabin at Camp Asable in Michigan. And, and we've taken construction projects, uh, uh, medical clinics, and evangelistic programs or VBS programs to Honduras and Cuba, uh, Dominican Republic, Panama. Um, we look for times or opportunities where we can take skilled labor and unskilled labor uh, the very young and the very old, the foreign travelers and the, the local natives, and, and we can work side by side in accomplishing and furthering, furthering God's work. Um, one project that really caught our, our hearts and we returned to multiple years uh, in a row was Las Palmas Orphanage mm. in Dominican Republic. Uh, can I tell you a miracle story here? Oh, yeah, please uh, do. The one particular year, we our our main project was waterproofing the roofs of of these buildings. Uh, you can imagine if you're running a school and caring for uh, ch orphaned children, to have water come through the roof is, is certainly not a sustainable situation. Mm -hmm. um, we identified the best product to use, and quickly realized that we really could only afford. We only had the funds to to do one building. Uh, after prayer, the distributor involved the manufacturer of the product, and they decided to make this a demonstration site. And we ended up with two or three times the amount of material that, that we could actually afford for this project. Wow. Then on the day of delivery, uh, there was a nationwide strike of the delivery companies. And we, again, had to pray, how are we going to get the materials to accomplish our, our project? Mm -hmm. And the distributor found uh, some drivers that knew of our work uh, and wanted to, to be supportive and found a way to get the product to us uh, so that we could start waterproofing these, these homes. And then at the end of the week, as we're trying to finish the project, make sure we, we have this complete, I, we see the storms come in and you know, sitting on a roof, trying to do, use a water sealer uh, is not going to be productive when it's raining and storming. Mm -hmm. So again, we prayed. We had a season of prayer on the roof and and watch the storms on radar and, and in the sky bypass us and we're able to complete the complete the work. It's just when when you put yourself out there out there like that and are fully at the mercy uh, of God and, and his influence, it's amazing to see how he does work. Yes. Amen. Yes. It's like exercising your faith muscles 
too, you know, <laughs> with those, with that prayer and, and seeing the results and just God open incredible doors. That, that's truly a miraculous story. Joy, I want to come to you um, and just talk to us a little bit about the annual Spring Fellowship convocations. Sounds good. I would love to talk about the Spring Fellowship, but I just have to pick up on something that Chris said. They talked about building churches and he mentioned Illinois. And I showed up for my first ever ASI in 2017. I was a fairly new convert to the Seventh-day Adventist mm -hmm. Church. And after introducing myself, I said I was part of the Princeton Seventh-day Adventist Church. And actually, Chris's father and many others in the room were involved in actually building that church. And it was one that I had stepped a toe in uh, close to 11 years ago now for the first time ever going into a Seventh-day Adventist Church for a cooking class. And that was my entree. So when I realized ASI had actually built the church that, you know, I was brought into yes. and discipled, I was, I felt like I was already an ASI member for life. Amen. So, so you had multiple connections with, with the ASI. Exactly. God yeah. was planning ahead, way ahead. So right. anyway, but the Spring Fellowship, uh, you know, in our good old days, mm -hmm. we used to get together. And I think we have a couple pictures um, mm -hmm. from, you know, our ASI family of friends getting together physically. And hopefully they'll pull up that picture. Yeah, we, we've had a lot of fun with our spring fellowships. And that's some of the folks on our leadership team, Julia O'Carry with ASAP, Tom Morrissey, our former president, and his daughter, Kathleen, who's now in charge of communications, Patty Elevancher with uh, Outpost Centers, I'm sorry, with Oak Haven. Okay. So anyway, we have a great team, had a lot of fun. We hear great presentations and everything. But now, of course, we're going virtual. So. This year, the theme that Debbie came up with with her committee mm -hmm. is faith, not fear. And yeah, I like that. it's perfect because, of course, a lot of people actually are struggling with their mental health and, you know, really wrestling with the fears around COVID and the economy and, mm -hmm. you know, last day's events and everything. But we don't have to cower in fear. We can be strong in faith. And so we also are taking that theme and moving it into what are the practical things we can do mm -hmm. Uh, from a health message to prevent ourselves from, you know, having the worst consequences. And so I think I'll maybe hand it over to Debbie too to add more about the details. Yes. So yeah, the, the theme that we've come up with, um, it wasn't something that we had to ponder very long. Uh, with the kind of uncertain times that we're living in, we recognized that what really was, we needed to put our anchor in was our faith in God. And with the, uh, the different challenges to our health, especially with COVID, we knew that there were a number of people that were um, in, in our society, people that we were, would connect with, were afraid and didn't know what to, to do and where to turn. And we know where to turn. We know that God has everything in control. And we thought that it would be really important to emphasize that uh, it, we, God wants us to be healthy so that we can respond to his leading and his biddings and to fulfill his purpose for our lives. So the faith, not fear, uh, came with uh, two anchor point texts. Uh, one was um, Hebrews 11:6, with without faith it is impossible to please God. Mm -hmm. And one in Exodus 15, 26, that essentially says, if you do um, all that I have asked you to do, if you are diligent in following my statutes, I will put none of these diseases on you. So there is a work that we can do to optimize our health. And so we want to be able to pass that information on to people who will come to the convention and also to encourage them that as they do their part, God will do his part. And so we want to encourage their faith to grow and to hold on to Jesus. Well, I'm, I'm looking forward to this, this uh, convention here. Um, Debbie, why don't you speak to us a little bit about maybe some ministries that have been or projects that have been supported in the past? Sure. So um, in addition to what we've done with mission trips going overseas in different parts of the country, uh, we also provide support for ministries that will uh, 
um, provide um, an application and ask for some assistance so that they can grow their ministries and so they can enlarge their reach. So in the past, for instance, we've um, provided support to uh, Harbor of Hope. It's a church actually located in Benton Harbor, Michigan. And um, Benton Harbor, Michigan actually is a church that has, I'm sorry, is a community that's been in the national news for one of the communities that has a lot of societal challenges. Mm. And so the pastor, Taurus Montgomery, and his church, Harbor of Hope, there in Benton Harbor, has really taken to heart the commission to go and to really meet the needs of the community. And so that photo that you just saw was uh, part of a health outreach that they were doing. Um, Rise Up is was the challenge, and he really is specifically looking to um, assist and lift up and give support to the youth in that community. So we are really happy to be able to provide support uh, for that project. Uh, of course, as you know, for Farm Stew, uh, Joy has uh, led that, that um, effort in different various uh, countries in on the continent of Africa. And so we wanted to be able to provide support for the continued outreach of that ministry to teach people how they can live and, uh, and provide for their families. Then um, ASAP uh, is another one where that has provided support for uh, an individual who has come over from another country and is really uh, wants to serve the refugees that have come from other countries seeking refuge here in the United States. And he may be, he was a pastor that uh, in his country, but when he comes over here, he may not be able to function as a pastor, but he really is operating as a pastor to reach out and to touch um, the lives of those refugees that are here and are looking for um, support and, um, uh, and want to, um, you know, in, in increase or improve their faith in God. Mm. So to be able to provide support for him to be able to do that as he is also working to support his family was something that we felt was important. Yes, yes. What are some things that are taken into consideration and, and perhaps either Debbie or Joy, if you want to answer this, what are some things that are taken into consideration uh, when it comes to supporting uh, ministries that apply for funds? Well, I'll take a stab at it. Uh, really, I think the, the impact for evangelism, the kingdom impact is really important. We also are looking for ministries that are in our union. So that includes Indiana, Illinois, Wisconsin, and Michigan. And like I said, other unions have their own process as well. And we really want to have something where we can also make sure that it's, they're accountable. Mm -hmm. So we do require a, a report to come in showing us how the funds were used and how that impact was made. Nice, nice. And what are some current projects uh, that are being supported? Okay, I think Chris is touching on that. I know uh, Care for Cuba is one that we're, uh, we're supporting this year. And Oak Haven Health has a health ministry and we're supporting them as they add to their uh, uh, exercise room and, and steam room uh, so that they can do the hot and cold treatments and, and continue their health ministry. Oh, nice, nice. And Debbie, it sounded like you were gonna say something just a minute ago as well. Yeah, so you know, a couple of the other projects, just to add to those that Chris just listed, is a Strong Tower Radio. Mm -hmm. It's uh, based in Cadillac, Michigan, and so we want to provide support so they can enlarge their ministry by upgrading their equipment. So as they uh, share testimonies and um, messages, um, it will be a blessing to those that uh, they have been touching lives for years um, already. Yeah. Uh, we also want to have, um, con we continue to provide support for Farm Stew, for ASAP and for Harbor of Hope, and um, as was mentioned, uh, Oak Haven Health. So we're looking and, and praying that God will help us mm -hmm. to be able to provide that support. Even though we can't meet together, we can hold the hands up of ministries that are out there serving others and trying to give the gospel of uh, peace and Jesus soon coming. Amen. Amen. You know, as we speak about the messages, I think we should go to jean Luca and find out about the speaker lineup. Absolutely. So... <laughs> 
this is amazing because, uh, you know, if we were to do this in person, we, we would not, I don't think we could pull this off. So this is one of the benefits of this virtual time that we're living in right now that we can actually bring in some some just amazing speakers that can touch on a number of different topics. And uh, so we're super excited about the lineup of speakers that we have. So start kicking off on our Friday evening, typically on Friday evening, we, we will have a, a speaker that will kind of open up the weekend. And this year we're going to have, uh, you, you guys may have know him by the name Chef Chu or Chef oh, Chu, G.W. Chu. Mm -hmm. Yes, who, who I think has been on your Dare to Dream program before in the yes. past. Yes, absolutely. Choose uh, challenge. Uh, yeah, he an, 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 has an amazing story, and uh, he's going to be sharing his testimony for those of you who don't know a lot about him. But he's, a, he's an African-American entrepreneur uh, who is uh, living in California. He opened up a vegetarian restaurant or a vegan restaurant in Oakland following uh, Ellen White's writings about uh, having a, a ministry, a food ministry in Oakland, like they were having on Market Street in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. And uh, he then has gone on from not only opening up his own restaurants and doing cooking classes, but then actually starting up a food company called Better Chew, or that's the name of the, the brand of the product that he creates. And uh, he even is selling it through Whole Foods. And uh, so he just has an amazing story of how, um, you know, he grew growing up and, you know, becoming a Seventh-day Adventist. He didn't grow up in the church. He became a Seventh-day Adventist using his coal portering skills to be able to really, um, you know, be able to, you know, sell his ideas, you know, to people in the marketplace. And so you don't want to miss his, his testimony because he really has an inspiring testimony. And I encourage, you know, any young people especially to, to come and, and listen to his uh, presentation because if you have any ideas uh, or have any desire to to become more entrepreneurial, um, this guy you know he has lots of uh, good tips for that. Yes. And then, and then Sabbath morning we're going to have uh, Dr. Magna Porterfield. She is a psychologist and she has a uh, an amazing clinic where they, they help people on how to optimize their health. Um, you know, they have resources for both mental and physical health, and she wants to focus on mental health. So her presentation is gonna be on how to achieve and maintain positive mental health, which as Joy mentioned during this time of COVID is very important, but as we know the statistics, even around COVID, before COVID, uh, were dismal as far as the percentage of people uh, suffering from depression and anxiety. So, I mean, I think only COVID exacerbated that. So her message is one that you will not want to miss on how to optimize your, your mental health. Mm -hmm. And then we will also be having um, a Dr. David DeRose. He is actually a pastor and at the same time a medical doctor who, um, who actually is the president of Compass Health Consulting. And he's written numerous books and he has... He just brings a just a, a wonderful connection between the spiritual and the physical. I mean, he is somebody who will be able to provide us a message on how we can use biblical principles in order to find peace and to to achieve the type of health that we that we want and, and, and should have at this time. In the afternoon, we're going to have uh, some of you may also be familiar with uh, Rico Hill. Mm -hmm. He is. He has been involved in media for many years. He was part of MTV's Nickelodeon and then vice uh, president of programming for Turner Broadcasting. And he left that world and then started his own media ministry. Uh, you may be familiar with it called Beehive International. And he's going to be presenting his own testimony, again, about how to use our health message as a way to to evangelize and how to minister to other people so you don't want to miss his uh, his uh, testimony and what he has to say about uh, health evangelism and then finally we are also privileged to have uh, Wes Youngberg I think many of you may know Dr. Youngberg he is um, truly one of our um, outspoken uh, you know uh, uh, influencers on the area of health optimization He's uh, just a uh, just an, an amazing resource, and again during this time of COVID and just in general, if you look at the health of our population, uh, whether you're Adventist or not, you know we we have a lot of work to do on the health front, and 
And so we're going to be able to have a wonderful conversation with Wes and really focusing on how we can optimize our health. So as you can see, faith over fear or faith not fear, what we're trying to get people to understand is that there's a lot of tools that God has given us. You know, we were to live according to his principles. If, there, if we follow a lot of these laws that he has given us, you know, we'll be able to achieve that mental and physical health you know, that, that God really wants us to be able to experience. Yes, yes. You know, this is a very timely event with all of the things that are taking place. This is very, very timely. We've, we've talked about the speaker lineup. We've talked about the, the conference and all of that. But how do people register? How can people, if they want to attend, how can they register? Well, we're very excited because it's not just for Lake Union anymore, right? It's mm -hmm. virtual. People can come from around the world. The dates are sat, uh, Friday evening, and that is April 16th, mm -hmm. and then all day Sabbath on April 17th. And we have our website, and actually if you could pull up the logo, that would be great. So it's Faith Not Fear is the conference, and then it's a bit hard to see there at the bottom, but it's uh, asiministries.org. And actually, I think that we're going to have a link from there. You can also type in ASI Lake Union and find it there as well. So we're really excited to invite people. Mm -hmm. And also on the, on the end, they'll show the phone number to call as well. Yeah. So I know, Debbie, you had a few th more things to say about registration too. Oh, no, that's, we just want everybody to come. Uh, even though, and, and as uh, Gianluca said, um, this is one of the blessings of a pandemic. The virtual environment has allowed us to travel the world and to hear um, everyone to be able to share. So we want you to join us on April 16th at 7 p.m. Eastern and on Saturday on Sabbath at 10 a.m. Eastern as well as at 4 p.m. Eastern for those special uh, presentations. Um, also know that we won't just be sitting and listening to others or our keynote speakers. We actually have members within our Lake Union who have really taken to heart some of the admonitions and the, the challenges uh, of, of being more healthy. You heard Gianluca say that he was uh, an avid um, health advocate and that he is a triathlon and marathoner. I tell you, he, talking with him has really inspired me and I've had to dust off my treadmill. Um, but uh, we actually have a couple of our members who um, have lost weight. So they haven't had pandemic weight as so many people have talked about. Um, but have actually lost weight because they've been able to kind of focus and refocus their attention on what matters. So what matters is really putting Jesus first and how can I be uh, equipped and better tooled to, to his service? And one of those answers is to be a better physical specimen. Mm. And so if we can be more healthy, then we can be a better witness and a testimony to the world about what Jesus can do through you and what you can do for Jesus. Yeah, that's an excellent point. You know, I'm gonna have to put my fork down and, <laughs> and pick and pick some weights up or something. I got to get it together over here. No, you, know, you yeah, definitely want to pick those weights up. Uh, you know, you, picking up heavy food won't do the trick. That's, that's right. Well, I was hoping I could, you know, get reap some benefits through osmosis or something. <laughs> you know, actually, Debbie was referring to uh, Carmelo Mercado, who actually is with the Lake Union in a very high position. I think. And uh, he is going to be sharing his testimony. Mm -hmm. And honestly, it is so inspiring. And the thing about ASI is you join a community of people. And so, you know, we all have our local churches and they're great, right? Mm -hmm. Some are small, some are big, some mm -hmm. are inspiring, some maybe some weeks not. But, you know, I think with ASI, we can get that energy from each other, whether it's, you know, because somebody's really getting uh, great progress in their business or just need encouragement in their business or maybe their ministry story has a miracle like Chris was just sharing. And we can actually bring that back and energize our local congregations as well. So we are, uh, ASI is supporting of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Yes. But this conference is for anyone, any of your three ABN listeners. We want to provide you with health tips. We want to engage you as well. And so the other thing Debbie said is, it's not just gonna be a virtual where you're staring at the screen. We have 
Carmelo actually figured out the technology where we can break out into sessions and breakout rooms and you know, have prayer times together, have discussion times together. So we're going to have facilitated discussions and it won't just be, you know, staring at the screen. Yeah, so there's a, a wide variety that will be engaging for everyone. Exactly. That's, that's excellent. You know, as I look at ASI and what ASI does, ASI Lake Union, what are the needs of ASI? Because they provide for so many ministries and help to support other organizations and all of that stuff. But what does ASI need? How can people help support ASI? Well, I'll start and then I'll hear from the others on Skype here, but I would say our need is more members. Mm -hmm. We want people to be involved. We want people to basically access the benefits that we enjoy as members. And so it is a bit of a process um, because we want people that are going to show the character of ASI. Mm -hmm. We want you know, sort of those specimens <laughs> like Debbie was saying. So th there is an application process. But we really want to engage and, and have more members because, you know, I go back to Stephanie Dawn's song about the hands, you know, mm -hmm. two hands can do very little. But when we add our hands to other people's hands and, and we become this body of Christ where Christ is the head, he's, he's giving us our charges, mm -hmm. but there's all these different body parts at work. That's, that's how I see ASI working together is, mm -hmm. and we need more people and we need all of us to be listening to Christ. Yes, yes. Does anybody want to add anything to that? Uh, this is Debbie, and I'll just add that I think what ASI needs is for all of us as members to constantly challenge ourselves to think about what we can do more for Jesus, mm -hmm. um, that we want to be conduits of blessing for others. So how can we reach our, our the, the neighbor next door? Um, one of the things that I've tried to do is make sure that I uh, go to the same establishment for some services so I can develop a relationship that might open doors for me able to be shared. So again, we want everyone to always be thinking, what can I do more for Jesus? Um, it's something that I've heard Danny Shelton say uh, before on uh, 3ABN is the blessing is in the go. So we've got to go and we've got to think about what we can do when we go so that we can reach others and let them know that Jesus is coming soon. Amen. 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 Yeah. And, and I would just add that, you know, what we need are ideas. You know, I believe that uh, in this time that we're living in, um, you know, there's so things are changing so fast in the way that Christ is 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 being portrayed in the media, you know, religion is being portrayed in the media. You know, there's ways that how can I put it? There there's so many types of media out there today that didn't, you know, really exist five, ten years ago. And we need ideas of how to tap into this because there's a there's a message being put out there about who Christ is, and it's not necessarily the right message. And mm -hmm. so we need ideas at how we can actually penetrate and be able to have a much greater influence out there. And, you know, people who are willing to step up to the plate and to be able to put their time, their energy, their other resources, whether it be monetary um, or just talent uh, behind this, because I truly believe that we need, um, we need people to be engaged, to come up with new innovative ideas, and to be you know, as active as possible um, in, in sharing Jesus, because I believe that there's an information war out there, and we need to do our part to make sure that Christ is being properly you know, presented and the, the attractiveness of our message, and yet at the same time, making sure people understand, hey, if you're a follower, it also does require certain sacrifices and, you know, being able to do things in the community to help others. So there's there are these both aspects to being an ASI member, and we need people's ideas on how to implement that. Yes, yes. So how to implement that and lead, lead people to Christ in the workplace by providing a, a Christ-like example because I think you really nailed that, uh, you know, with there being a misrepresentation of Christ's character. Um, I talked to some people about like search engine optimization and all of those things. And it used to be where people would Google uh, about Jesus and they would get all of the wrong type of information. Um, so I love that ASI is covering every single facet, every single uh, base there. Joy, 
What else would you like to add before we go to the address role? Well, the thing I would just like to encourage is for people to learn more about the different things that ASI is involved in mm -hmm. and the different ministries. Because, for example, uh, Adventist World Radio is one of the ministries. I don't know how many people I've sent Cami Utman's um, Unlocking Bible Prophecies yes. stories to. But, you know, that's a way of digital evangelism. I didn't even know what digital evangelism was until I joined ASI. So it's kind of just tailing on uh, what Jean-Luc was saying. Learn what resources we have to mm -hmm. share Christ in all of the different realms of our lives. And we just hope people will come. We hope you will come if you're listening. And again, we want to invite you to go to the ASILakeUnion.org website mm -hmm. and, you know, sign up and and join us and not just join to listen, but apply these healthy habits that we can make that will allow Christ's glory to shine through us in a brighter way. Yes, amen. So real quick, what are some of the challenges that you think people face when sharing Christ in the workplace? Wow, well, like John Lucas said, you know, it is a very secular environment. Mm -hmm. And we all know people that the minute you say the name of Jesus, their, their face just changes. But I think living out, like, like Debbie was challenging us to do, living out the love of Christ, living out the kindness of Christ, living out the patience and the generosity of Christ. That's what I've seen in so many ASI members. And it's what inspires me to want to get closer to Jesus myself. Mm -hmm. And I think the challenge for all of us is distraction. Mm -hmm. Satan mm -hmm. loves to take our minds and do anything but focus on prayer, focus on the word and focus on loving others. And so I just wanna call us to draw close to Christ so that we can reflect his glory to the world. Amen. Amen. Yeah, he wants to pull us away from anything to do with God. And nowadays, there's so much vying for our attention. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's absolutely right. We want to uh, go to the address roll and then a brief news break, and we'll be right back. For more information about ASI Lake Union, please contact them at P.O. Box 287, Berrien Springs, Michigan, 49103. That's P.O. Box 287, Berrien Springs, Michigan, 49103. Their phone number is 269-473-8247. That's 269-473-8247. Their website is asilakeunion.org. That's asilakeunion.org. You may also email them at communications.luesa at gmail.com. Wow, I can't believe our time is just about up. Joy, why don't you uh, share some closing remarks with us? Well, I just want to thank you, Jason, and thank 3A Ben for having us. And we are actually very fortunate because ASI Lake Union is in the same uh, geographic area as 3A Ben. But we are just one chapter of mm -hmm. ASI, and we want to invite people to go to the ASI Ministries website so that you can find out more about your chapter and get involved. But since we are virtual and everyone can come to our event, we want to invite you again. It's the ASI Lake Union Spring Fellowship. You can find out about it on asilakeunion.org. And again, I just want to remind people it's going to start Friday, April 16th, and that's 7 p.m. Eastern time with Chef, Chef Chu. Hmm. Very excited to hear his testimony. And then we'll be kicking off on Sabbath morning at 10 a.m. Eastern time with Dr. Magna Porterfield. You don't want to miss that. Your mental health may count on it. And then we'll be with Dr. David DeRose at 10 a.m. Actually, it might be later in the day, Eastern time. Uh, we'll figure out the time then. And then Rico Hill, again, another amazing speaker. And then we'll be wrapping up at 4 p.m. Eastern time with Wes Youngberg. And you know, these are some of the best mm -hmm. out there nationwide, internationally, fantastic speakers and we're excited that they can be at our conference and we hope you can be there too. Absolutely. What, what's one of the things that you really look forward to uh, with this conference? 
I just want to learn. I mean, I'm a public health nutritionist myself, but these are the guys I listen to and women that I listen to to learn and get inspired and, you know, engage in doing what I know I should do. Yes, yeah, so, so that growth as, as well. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing. And I want to thank uh, our other guests on Skype. You couldn't be here in the studio, but thank you for your contributions and thank you for joining us. Until next time, God bless. Thank you.